Thank you for watching the video today. On today's video, we're going to be talking about deer antlers and the impact that weather has on their growth. Everybody's interested in deer antler. Everybody's interested in deer antlers. Everybody's interested in deer antlers. You know, antlers are fascinating. In fact, they found, historians have found in, in caves where Native Americans who went after venison and hunted venison obviously cared about antlers because they, they inscribed uh, various inscriptions on walls depicting antlers and it showed that they really did favor bucks that were older. And so, you know, but it's fascinating. It's a mystery. Do you remember the first time that you saw a buck? I remember mine in a school bus when I was a kid and a, a big old buck jumped the road. And you know, they were just really rare where I lived. Very, very rare. In fact, <clears throat> when I hunted for, for deer, I, uh, I had a hard time coming across the path of any buck, much less a large buck. But I remember when I was a teenager, that I was, I was hunting. I had a bunch of does come out in front of me and this, this buck, which I thought at the time was so enormous, a 10 point buck, 130 uh, inch class came out. And I mean, just seeing those antlers were just mesmerizing. And you know the feeling, there's so, so much mystery to it, but antlers are fascinating for a lot of different reasons. You know, they've studied antlers for various reasons, uh, not just um, for interest in wildlife biology, but a cure for, possible bone cancer. That bone right there is one of the fastest growing on the planet. And this is a nice shed right here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good mass. He's got a couple of stickers coming out here that didn't quite do it, but exceptional brow tine length. Just a great looking uh, shed right there. Does weather impact antler growth? You know, it's proven that bucks can reach their full potential during wet years or at least close to it. And conversely, they have a harder time reaching their full potential during droughty, dry, or extra hot arid conditions. Dry years lead to diminished vegetation. The quality of the vegetation is not as good. Deer have a harder time trying to find the nutrition that they're looking for. In Oklahoma, more Boone and Crockett bucks are killed during wet years when vegetation is lush and there's plenty to eat, which goes back to the idea that it is true that nutrition and age are the primary factors in antler development. Even across the country, more Boone and Crockett bucks are killed during wet years than dry years. So here we are in the middle of a very hot period uh, it's been terrible on my food plots. The food plot started, it was cold. Planted the food plots, the, the temperatures dropped, we didn't get any rain. And now we've had, I think, eight days over 100 degrees already. Pretty phenomenal. So it's a struggle. You walk out in the food plot and, you know, I had the idea, I'm gonna plant 10 acres of food plots. Uh, I have a buddy uh, who was gonna plant with me and plant just south of me. And uh, he decided, you know, Mike, I think I'm just gonna pass this year. After looking at forecasts, it was just too great of a risk. Not me, boy, I rolled the dice, said, let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and buy seed and I'm gonna get ready to plant. You know, cause yeah, I've had some really good years on food plots and I was concerned about it, but it did, it did, it, it didn't pan out well. We still have some food plots that are going, but it's really difficult. So during hot weather, during these dry times, during these, these droughts, which seem to be setting in on us, what do you do? How do you, how do you cope? How do you make sure that your, your deer get good nutrition? Well, number one, make sure that, that your deer have a, a good source of fresh water, you know, um, and, and keep, the, keep that water away from areas that are drying up. Now, right now we're not in danger of that. I don't need to go put out water. Uh, as hot as it's been, Neighboring counties have gotten as much as six inches of rain. We've gotten like a tenth of an inch. It's ridiculous, but they've gotten as much as six inches of rain. So all their water is coming downstream and the, the river was out of its banks last week. But when you get into that time period, you need to, you need to have water out. And really, the, the reason why I suggest this is because of EHD. Uh, 
I had a phenomenal buck a couple of years ago. It was a, a, a droughty time. You know, I've been following this deer since he was a year and a half. He was a 10 point buck at a year and a half old buck. And that partic particular year when we had the drought, um, you know, they go down, they, they try to find some water and they, they get into these areas where the water is almost evaporated and it, it, it's good nesting area for these gnats. Uh, you know, the, the midge, they get down, they, they drink and they get bit by these. So it, it, it just kind of sets a trap for them to get in that area where they can be in danger of getting EHD. And EHD is a horrible thing. You can't really stop it. But I figure that if you can get the water as far away from those areas where the gnats are concentrated, uh, you'll do better. The second thing that I would suggest is make sure that you have a quality protein feed out for them. For me, I like whole grain proteins like soybeans and cowpeas, and I'll keep those out. I didn't plan on doing this this year. I do have one side right now that I'm keeping going, but I'm going to actually add to where I have several. I really wanted to save that money, and the food plots are just more, much more beneficial than uh, that, but you know, that's the only way I'm going to be able to get a high quality protein out to them. So we're going to bring in some soybeans and try to keep it stocked so they'll have something to eat. You can go ahead and put out whole grains if you want. Just remember that whole grains are hot. Uh, we've got a lot of whole grains growing around us this time of year anyway, like Milo, sorghum. Uh, you can use that. Just remember they're hot and try to limit the amount that you give them. A lot of people use corn. Uh, deer love corn. It's a huge attractant to them, but as I've, I've said before, it's not necessarily the healthiest thing for them. And when you start feeding them corn, you need to start out slow and then you need to be fairly consistent and not let them eat, you know, all they can eat. So we've got a, a Milo field, 320 acres that, that uh, borders my place. And when that thing starts getting ripe, you can guarantee that every buck in the vicinity is going to be on that place. I mean, it's a good place to get some pictures of deer coming back and forth and some of our bigger bucks appear during that time of course as the field gets harvested they disappear back to where they came from but um, that's what i'm going to do is put out good quality food for them you put out some whole oats for them and it's going to definitely attract some deer and give them some good nutrition but protein is where i really would concentrate go ahead and hit like and subscribe if you like what's going on here if you like what you're seeing uh, thank you for watching the video today. Make it a great day. Go enjoy the outdoors and may God bless you.